But, but, if that's, it the, but that's the problem, right. though. I mean, if you think about that, here, here's what, if you think about that, this is what it seems like is happening. Uh, uh, you said gold, exchange of rate, uh, U.S., obviously the currency and a long-term interest rate, and, and I'll get to a second part of the question here, is in order for the person to do the right thing, so let's just say we know what the right thing is to campaign on, okay? So imagine I'm running for office, and this is my campaign. We need to stop spending money. We need to have the 40% uh, of businesses that are too, you know, people that don't have the finances in order. Some of these guys need to get filtered out. We need to figure out a way to pay off our debt. And in doing so, we need to raise the taxes. We need, no one's going to vote for this person. Well, so we I, need I, Look, yes, freedom, capitalism, liberty is a lousy campaign slogan. People don't vote for freedom. They vote for free stuff. But, but, that is the problem. Look, the founding fathers knew this. That's why America was created as a republic. They knew if we were a democracy, we would collapse. So they protected us from democracy with the Republican form of government that they created. And they, and they bound the government in the chains of the Constitution. And it worked for a long time. We were incredibly free throughout the 19th century. I mean, the most prosperous period of, Ameri of American history, of world history, was probably the end of the Civil War to the beginning of the First World War. That's when we had the smallest government, the purest gold standard. We really were you know, following the Constitution and, and we prospered. But yes, you know, it is very difficult when now everybody is voting and the government in particular has crippled so many people uh, and now they have the crutch. And people don't realize that they're crippled because of the government. All they see is the government offering a crutch and they want that crutch. And look, you know, you look at look at the example of student loans. I mean, this is one of the most obvious examples of a government created problem. I ran for Senate in Connecticut in 2010 and, you know, I was uh, against student loans. I wanted to abolish all government guaranteed student loans and all student loans. And, you know, before the government got involved, in student loans, which it didn't always do. It really started with the GI Bill in the Second World War, but that was just you know to, to help the soldiers who were returning from the war. They really started getting involved in the 60s. So before that, you know, if you wanted to go to college, you just paid for it, and it wasn't expensive. College, believe it or not, was not expensive before the government came in to help make it affordable. If your parents were relatively rich, they just wrote a check. You know, if they were upper class, you know. If your parents were lower middle class or middle class, maybe you got a summer job. That's what my dad did. My dad went to college. He, he grew up. His parents were relatively poor. Uh, he worked his way through college, like most of his friends, by waiting tables over the summer. That's it. He graduated college, no debt, right? And he, you know, and, and, and he lived away from home, but he was able to earn enough just getting tips on a summer job. Uh, to, to put himself through college. But what happened is a bunch of politicians came to the students in the 1960s and said, you shouldn't have to work over the summers. You should enjoy your summers. You should be go to the beach and having fun. We'll let you borrow the money, right, to go to college and just pay it back after you graduate when you have a better job and you can earn more money. And the students were like, oh, that sounds great. I can have fun this summer. I don't have to work. The government's going to give me this loan. Now, of course, Without the government guarantees, the students couldn't borrow the money because they had no collateral. What bank is going to loan money to an 18-year-old? You know, so uh, they couldn't have got the loans. But once the government guaranteed the loans, then any, anybody could get the loans. So the minute the, the, the kids had all this money to go to college and bid up the prices, the universities were like, oh, wow, we can really raise prices now because the students can borrow the money from the government and, and, and give it to us. So the minute the government started uh, guaranteeing student loans, tuition has started to explode. And then as the tuition got higher and higher, the government had to provide bigger and bigger loans to pay for it. And then it became a self-perpetuating spiral. The more money the government made available to students, the higher the tuition got to the point that now the students are graduating with a crippling amount of debt. Whereas they used to graduate debt-free when the government wasn't involved at all, now they're graduating with massive debt. And the irony of it is you see these Democrats, right, in these debates po pointing to this huge problem without admitting that the government is the only reason those student loans exist. Without those student loans, college would be cheap <laughs> and students wouldn't have any debt. But because of government interference, the cost of a college degree went through the roof. And because everybody has a college degree now, they're worth nothing. Before the government was involved, 
Most people didn't go to college. A high school degree was all you needed. Now, because everybody goes, you need a high, you need a college degree to do what you used to be able to do with a high school degree. Now you got to get a master's or a PhD. But by the time you borrow all the money to get that, and you're in school into your early 30s, right? You're in debt up to your eyebrows. All this is because of government. Now, what are these guys saying? Are they saying, oh, we really screwed up here? We had good intentions, uh, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And now we need to get government out of the student loan business completely. We need to have free market capitalism working so that colleges are under competitive pressures to control their costs to get customers like everybody. No, no, no. Now the solution is completely nationalize it. Have the government pay for college. Let's make college free. Let's forgive all the loans. So now they want to make college even more expensive by making it free, right? The most expensive things are the stuff you get from the government for free. So they first they jacked up the cost by subsidizing it. Now they want to make it even more expensive by providing it for free. They did the same thing with housing. You know, they did the same thing with healthcare. Every aspect of the economy that the government gets involved in, they screw it up. They make the price go up and the quality go down. Whereas when the free market is involved, the opposite happens. Prices go down and, and quality goes up. But I, I got to finish the point I was making on the choice that the Fed has. Either they do the right thing and let interest rates go up and the whole house of cards that they've been building crashes down, or they don't do that because it's too politically difficult and they just print money. They just continue the QE, they bail out everybody and they destroy the dollar and then the dollar is worthless. And then if they do that, right, a hyperinflation is much worse economically than just a massive economic collapse, right? The pain that that will inflict is gonna be far greater but because it may happen six months or a year later or two years later, who knows, that may be the course that we end up uh, taking. So again, everything you said, let's just say common sense. Let's take common sense. Make the government smaller, you know, uh, 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 you know, figure out a way to not spend the kind of money with school loans where the government's not involved in the school loans. Let the private folks do it. You don't get involved. So we don't have to have the, what's the number today? One trillion dollars, a, a trillion uh, 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 one, four, or one, uh, it's somewhere around there, a trillion, two, or a trillion, three, we have college debt, right? Oh, yeah. Everything it's like saying, it's more than that. Yeah, let's just say it's everything you're saying, common sense, somebody watching says, okay, th this makes sense. I get it. But I want to go solutions. I want to go next phase. I talked to a guy at AIG. We were having a debate because I, I've been asking these guys to make some adjustments on their technology. And they keep saying, Pat, you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. This was like four years ago. Finally, one of the guys who's a stud, quality guy, trust him. He said, look, you have to realize who you're doing business with. I said, what's that? He said, this is AIG. I said, I know. I've been doing business with you guys for a decade now. He says, we're so big that when you want to launch a new adjustment to a software or a technology, it's not like a small business owner, entrepreneur that's nimble to say, let's make the change. It's going to take, you know, 60 yeah. days, 90 Look, days. Yeah. Higher. Here's where I'm going with this. Let me wrap up the question here. We're saying, okay, let's make the government smaller. You got seven and a half, eight million employees that are government employees. You got the military. You got all these people that are working, you know, all these different EP, all these departments that you have. How do you make the government smaller on one term or two terms? So again, this leads to the next question is, you got one term, two term president. Then you got Republican president, Bush senior, then you got Clinton, then you got Bush, then you got Obama, then you got Trump, then you got, you know, uh, say uh, uh, Cuomo gets elected. One philosophy doesn't stay long enough for us to be able to pay off this, that it's about what campaigns get, gets us reelected. Yeah. So well, I mean, the debt's not going to be paid off. That, we have to be honest about that. We can't even solve the problems in West. we're honest about the situation. So the debts are not going to be repaid. The question is, is it better to inflate them away or default. I think default is better. I think a legitimate bankruptcy and restructuring is better. Hey, look, we loaded all the kids up with debt. Yes, students have much too much debt. We cannot expect them to repay it, but we can't solve the problem unless we first say, okay, no more government involvement in college. We, it was a mistake. Uh, and, and, and colleges are going to have to compete in the free market for students. No government guaranteed loans. No government direct loans. We, we have to go back to capitalism uh, in order for the solutions to work. The solutions will work. Now, people are going to lose money because if loans are not repaid, then the lenders are going to suffer a loss. That has to happen. 
But you know, when, when you talk about making government smaller, yes, the government's gonna have to lay off a lot of government workers. That doesn't mean those people are gonna be unemployed forever. That means the resources that were required to employ them are now freed up back to the private sector. The private sector is gonna use those resources more efficiently and more productively than the government. So whenever the government cuts spending, right, and, and, and including laying off government workers, now the private sector has more money to employ those workers productively. In fact, a lot of government workers, not only are they not productive, they actually work reducing the productivity of everybody else. So it's like the people who are actually producing, they are less productive because of all these bureaucrats getting in their way. So, you know, the bureaucrats are riding in the wagon and the rest of us are trying to pull it. If the people who are riding in the wagon not only jump out, but help us pull, right? Then we're going to make a lot more progress. That wagon is going to be a lot easier. We're going to be able to take it a lot further. So there's, there's a lot of light at the end of a free market tunnel. But first, you've got to get over that hump of, of letting voters know that, you know, yes, if you, if you died in exercise, I know it's not going to be fun, uh, but you're going to be healthier. You're going to have a better life. You're going to live longer. Uh, you know, if you just do this, if you just follow this program. So capitalism uh, is going to take us to where we want to go. Socialism never will. It's, it's a false promise that, oh, we're just going to solve this problem with more government. Uh, but, you know, the, the other problem is, you know, so many Americans have been brainwashed in government schools. They don't understand free market capitalism. They just see the problems in the economy and assume that they're a function of free market capitalism when they're not. And they think that more government is the solution to a problem that they don't understand was created by government. And by making government bigger, we're just going to make the problems bigger.